Welcome back to the wild Gulf of Carpentaria. We're in the midst of a huge adventure in the top end. The landscapes out here have truly blown my mind. As we chase some of the most remote fishing opportunities in the country. <laughs> Again! I got another one! We battle breakages. Not to put any pressure on roofs down there. Got to be a pretty darn good weld. And rising tides. This has changed everything. Yesterday we barely got the tyres wet. Today we'll need a snorkel. There's fish in my wheel ruts. And explore the magic that is Lorella Springs. It's going to be one of the single most incredible things I've ever seen. This is going to be the most epic, epic trip I think I've ever done. We are now 10 days into our massive golf adventure. Seven days of driving, but we're finally here. Having faced floods, bottomless mud, and dense scrub in our search for a secret river system in the far north. It looks like concrete, this stuff, just wild. At last, after days struggling through the salt flats of Lorella, we are within striking distance of our goal. I'm at the river, boys. I am at the river. I'd almost guarantee that we're the first people to ever put a boat in this stretch of river right here, ever. Mate, how epic is this? This is what it's all about. She's shallow, all right. At the moment, we are trying to navigate our way up an extremely small river system that we're hoping is going to get a lot bigger. And then it's going to turn into one of the biggest rivers in the world. It's called the ocean. That is the plan. For now, though, we've got a fair bit of work for us because every now and again, we come across this really tight section. Still not guaranteed we're going to make it, but what I am loving the fact is that we're on the mangroves now. So that should mean an unobstructed run all the way through. Fingers crossed. Ooh, big log under the water. Uh, around to the right. Right, right, right. right. Yep. I thought it was tight getting the boat to where we launched it. This is even tighter. We've been having to tear logs out of the way and push it across sandbars. Getting a boat out to the mouth of the system would be a dream come true. And sure enough, it looks like we could be in luck. Up ahead, <laughs> it's a sight for sore eyes. Yes, that is the Gulf of Carpentaria. It's been an absolute mission to make it to this remote spot, but the rewards, well, they're all around us. How good's this? We're right at the coast. That is the ocean right there. We've made it to the mouth, which is <laughs> insane. Insane. Now, I guess the only thing to do is quickly have a fish and see if we can't. Catch dinner. Find a couple of ingredients for tonight. This waterway is about as pristine as they come a perfect gulf waterway that's rarely seen a fisherman. We're chasing that elusive prize, barramundi. But luring these amazing fish out takes a bit of patience and a lot of luck. Yep, he's on. Get him. We're soon hooking up to a few locals, but getting that barra is going to take a bit more work. For that, we're pushing into some of the smaller tributaries and mangroves of the system, trying to hit the snags where the fish love to hide. And at last, we've got a bite. Oh yeah, good fish. Good fish. That's a barra. Good barra. Good barra. He's a real good barra. <laughs> Again! I got another one. Yes! Well, this is exactly what we came all the way up here for. Barra Mundy. Look at that bad boy. <laughs> Driven second for the trip. My second one, mate. I cannot believe it. Absolute stonker. From here, though, oh, we've still got a heck of a journey. We've got to get out of this river system, across the tidal flats, and back out of here, back to Lorella Springs. And then from Lorella Springs, as you all know, it's still a heck of a long way from anywhere, so I don't know what remote stands for. This is it right here. And that is the rewards. After a morning on the water, it's time to ride the tide back to our camp. Lorella Springs offers over 4,000 kilometers, a low range country to explore. And we've got a lot more planned on this trip. But first, of course, we're going to make it back out of the salt flats. And that's no mean feat. What a beautiful water system that was. And you know what's even better? I didn't get bogged. <laughs> one fishing adventure done. Let's go and find the next one, eh? Well, fellas, I've got to say, that was an absolute hoot. 
you know, taking a boat where maybe no one else has ever done so before. Um, that's, a, that's a definite highlight for me. And now we've got the treacherous task of trying to get back, trying to remember the tracks, and hopefully we haven't dug it up too bad. I'd kind of forgotten about it, to be honest, mate. I was having so much fun out there. It's such a beautiful system, too, that I'd kind of forgotten that we have to uh, retrace our steps over some pretty gnarly ground. Yeah, absolutely. Getting back is going to be pretty wild now. The uh, tides have started to lift over the last couple of days too, so good luck, eh? Yeah, what I'm concerned about is um, there were some times where you couldn't go on another person's wheel track, so we sort of spread out a little bit, which is fine for getting this far, but to get back, we're going to probably retrace our steps, which, um, heck, anything could happen then. Well, I'm not retracing the steps I did last time. I was sunk to me axles. Staying out of our old wheel tracks is definitely the aim, but that can be easier said than done, and it's not long before a vehicle is down. You've done it again. Car just sunk. <laughs> Literally just sunk. I didn't even drive, it just sunk. Tim's the only one on this trip that's managed to avoid getting sucked down by the mud, and he's going to be the anchor point for Graham on this one. Well, that's incredible. I literally just parked then on a little tiny drainage hole off this slightly elevated country here. It's hard on one side, it was only about that wide and I parked perfectly on it so the rear wheel sunk down as I was sitting in the vehicle. One of the boys behind said, are you singing Graham? I'm like, yeah, I believe I am. <laughs> so there you go, you can get bogged out here without even turning your vehicle on. You've got to be careful. We've been incredibly lucky on this one, and by using absolutely no drive, Graham is able to pop that rear tyre back out, instead of dragging sideways and deeper, like has happened so often on this trip. That was crazy, I can't believe that he actually just sunk like that, it was so inconspicuous. Anyway, onward, let's uh, I think not stopping and speeds the trick with this stuff, crazy. We've seen time and time again how a couple of vehicles can completely change this surface into a treacherous bog. So we're dancing our way as best we can across the top and just hoping for the best. So far, our four tonne ballet on ice is working, but up ahead, the lines are getting more treacherous. It's quite challenging, it looks soft here. I'm trying to think light thoughts here, but suddenly the ground just opens up. Now I'm stuck. Holy heck, the mud here has literally swallowed the 30, and I've gone down hard. Righto, oh, I'm down, I'm down, I'm down. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get out of this one. Hey, bugger. Alright, we'll uh, come and assess. How's this for stuck, eh? Hey? Just up there, there was a really, really little moist patch. So I just hooked it, came straight through this gap in the trees, and I noticed it looked a bit wet, and I just went, oh no, as soon as I hit it, I've come down, the bull bars nearly hit the dirt, it got that stuck. Well, actually it has. It's, it's actually bogged right down. We've been pretty stuck already this trip, but this one might just take the cake. What do you reckon, is that tree gonna hold? The problem with anchoring off trees around this part of the world is that their root system can be very shallow, and that makes for a pretty poor anchor point. It's the nature of these salt pans and these trees. You'd think they'd be extremely deep rooted, but they're not, they're actually very shallow rooted. And one thing just to keep in mind out here, if you do use them as a winch anchor and they do start to come out, just back it off and let them pack back down again. Don't pull them out of the ground if you can avoid it. That's what we just did with that one there, put it back in again, she'll be fine, but um, we found a really good big donkey up the back here. My Goodyear tyre might be 35 inches, but it's buried so deep you can barely see it. A quick test on the winch confirms what we thought. This is going to be a hard recovery. The single line pull isn't actually giving it enough windy to get that out of the ground. She's right down in there, and as we know, this mud and sand suck you down to the ground. So we're going to actually uh, hook it up, and we're going to do a double line pull back to there, and hopefully we can actually dislodge him out of the ground. Now you're coming up. With that increased pulling capacity, things are starting to come unstuck, but I'm a long way from out yet. I 
pick myself up a couple of cheese wheels here, but the 30 is coming free. Yeah! Have a go at that, eh? With the track now a couple of plough lines, there's no way the other vehicles are going to be able to follow, so we'll need to look for another option. Graham, he saw what I did. He doesn't want to go exactly the same way, which I don't blame him. He's going to go through here, but there's a bit of a water course. You know, we've sort of learned enough to know that when there's a bit of a divot in the sand, that means that water usually comes through there. It gets really, really soft underfoot. He's going to give it a go, but if he can get through the scary bit really fast, he might just have half a chance. Right, let's go. Up. That worked a treat. It doesn't look like heck of a lot. You saw Graham go there through, through there pretty easy, but it's a bit of a lottery because you might make it look easy or you might just sink straight down your ball bar like I did. The road just looks the same, but he's done that all right. I reckon if you get a couple of cars in here though, you'd go down for sure. <laughs> Makes a lot of noise. Just smoked it. Just smoked it. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Yoo-hoo! Oh, nothing. Woo-hoo-hoo! That's a way better track than I did. Yep. Like a cakewalk. Smells like a clutch walk. Whee! With the line sorted, we're off the salt pan and following our tracks back through the scrub. With the line already established, the main concern now is not staking a tyre on the way back through. Although for Reuben and the big DMW rig, things are a little bit more challenging. My good friend Reuben did an epic job towing the boat in. And now he's got to get it out. So to get it out, we have to remove some foliage. It's no mean feat to take a boat to a place like this, but Reuben has made it through and we're back on the move. A few careful hours of picking our way back along the tracks, we've made it near our first camp from the way up. But what greets us is a pretty nasty surprise. A tide that is a lot higher than we've seen so far. We didn't really count on this. It's hard to believe that this is the spot we crossed over just a day or two before. And it's our only viable option to get back across and out of here. Right now, we're pretty much trapped on the wrong side of the river. This is absolutely unbelievable. That water that you can see back there wasn't there yesterday. The tide is coming in this afternoon. In fact, we got stuck here, yes, or Graham got stuck here just the other day. We could walk across that. In fact, we, we crossed this river just over there and there was no water around. And now it looks like a proper river. So this has changed everything. We might have to camp here and I don't know if we have to do it, maybe go for a cast this afternoon. <laughs> This entire region is a tidal system, and we've been lucky so far with neap tides helping us get to the coast. But the tides are clearly on the turn, and with each day, they're only gonna get bigger. All we can do for now though, set up camp and wait for the next low. So the old electric chainsaw is getting a serious workout. Got to widen the tracks up all the time for roofs with the big boat. So the last tree we just fell, I pulled the chain off. Then a bit of a novice, I think, but we'll get it back on, no problems. What a wild day. Fishing in the river this morning. And now we're camped next to, well, there wasn't a river here just 24 hours ago. There was a body of water, but it was really quite shallow. The crossing, which is only 100 metres this way, 
Yesterday, we barely got the tyres wet. Today, we'll need a snorkel. <laughs> Let's go and have a look at it and see what it looks like. There's fish. There's fish in my wheel ruts. <laughs> oh, mud crab, get him. Get him, careful, bro, careful, bro. This is where I got bogged the other day and it was high and dry, the water was over there. Right now, there's a mud crab. There's a mud crab in my wheel hole that Jimbo's trying to get for dinner. And uh, well, as you can see, we've now got two significant water crossings in front of us. The biggest concern we've got here is what is this water gonna do to this ground? We know the ground is already sodden, it's already muddy. What's this water gonna do to it now? It's had a few days to dry out on those neeps, but now it's flooded again. I guess we'll find out tomorrow. We might have to draw short straws tomorrow to see, to see who goes first. But that is truly incredible. 24 hours ago, no water. Today, she flooded. Whoa! <laughs> Freaked out, he got his rubbed his claw on the edge of my finger and I freaked out. Oh no, he didn't leave my other plug Oh no! <laughs> It'll be floating if it's anywhere. Where is it? Our situation may have gotten a bit more dire, but you know what? I couldn't think of a better place to get trapped in. This place is an absolute paradise and we're loving every second of it. What do you reckon, folks? Would you be happy to get stuck in a place like this? Or have you been stuck in the bush before? Let us know in the comments below. Folks, for a limited time, Fulcrum are offering $399 installs when you choose Click and Fit at checkout. Now, that means not only you're getting installation at a crazy price, you're also buying suspension the easiest possible way you can with Fulcrum's Click and Fit. $399 installs, you're saving yourself hundreds. Jump online and check them out. In the light of morning, we're relieved to see that the water level has dropped a fair bit overnight, but there's still a heck of a lot more water than when we crossed a few days ago. According to the charts, we've got another hour to wait until dead low, which means there's time for a quick brekkie. Well, start the morning on a high, I reckon. We've got a big day today, and the biggest concern of all, of course, and everyone's been talking about it this morning, is about this this water crossing. The tide has receded, but we're a little bit worried that because it was such a big tide last night that the ground underfoot is gonna be very, very wet. And if it's wet, it means you get bogged to your chassis rail pretty quick. So anyway, we'll have to suck it and see pretty soon. But for now, get a nice big breakfast in here. Soon enough, the tide is at a low and it's time to make a move. Now look, we're a long way from help out here and being prepared for the worst is absolutely essential. I'll just take a second this morning um, for those that are interested in remote touring here's a cool little product that just might save your life this one here is a personal locator beacon from GME now I've been taking this on pretty much every trip in fact but it's a good little um, I suppose redundancy package because if something goes absolutely wrong um, you can hit this just like hitting an EPIRB and um, emergency services will be notified. Bright yellow, everyone knows where it is in my vehicle, so if there is an emergency and maybe I'm rendered out of action, everyone knows where it is and they know how to use it, which is very easy. You just simply press the button and um, help will be on its way. So fingers crossed we don't need to use this one, but it's good to have. Well, bright and early in the morning, we've come down to check this crossing. Now's the time to do it, because we've got a high, a big high, the Sabi, so we've got to get across now. Plenty of water in here, but that's not what I'm concerned about. I don't care about the water, it's what the ground's like underneath. She was thermish coming across. I got bogged, but the boys came across with a heap of bunty this side of there, and they got through, no problem at all. But way down there, it's just, I don't know, what it might be, mate, is that it's, it's still nice and firm, but it's wet, yes. if you know what I mean? So it might look as bad as it is. I don't know, I'm just really, really scared. <laughs> It's really, really sloppy and It is. Though. It is. I reckon you just go full noise on the big 62. Yeah. We'll do the same. But the good news is we're sending the crash test dummy through first in the way of <laughs> old Sean. So we'll see what he does and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. But I think this is going to be a full send noise across that. Right, mate. We're going to get this all or nothing. I think he will. He's not going to hold back. 
Spooling her up. Holy heck, he really did go full send. Well, that's great. A great feeling. The ground has held up and I'm through the first crossing. Oh, a bit of water come in. Here we go, boys. And just like that, I'm across unscathed. That's how we do that. Well, Ruben, yes. you have seen what you got to do, mate. Yeah. All the bunty. Can you do us a favour, though? Yeah. Can you just check the straps on that boat before you go across? <laughs> Oh, he's being very subdued at this point in time. Very subdued. That's about to change. Yeah, here it goes. Holy heck. You can see the mud just opening up behind that boat trailer. This crossing really won't support many vehicles, and we're all going to have to try to keep out of each other's wheel tracks. Yeah, you're good, mate. Gonna get... Wow. Mate, that's actually significantly harder on that side than we figured it was. They're bouncing over yeah, that. Yeah, jump. Jumping over jump. it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bye -bye. Here we go, guys. I'm just gonna stick to the left of these wheel ruts a bit. Just see how that performs. Can't see, can't see. Holy heck. The D-Max is a light and agile vehicle, and it's just sailed across that crossing. No dramas at all! Straight through. Ah, hey. salty boy! There we go. <laughs> right, hey, Timbo. Right, oh, Timbo! Come on, buddy. Oh, he's a taking new a new line. It's a new line. The bold move. Oh, easy. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly <laughs> killed a cameraman, but done it easily. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Well, yes. Feels good to be on the other side of that one. That's us across. All three. Yeah, it's a good feeling. That is a good feeling. Epic. Epicness. It's a great feeling to have made it across that system, but it turns out that things are about to get a whole lot better because I finally got myself a decent sized barra. How good is that, eh? The beautiful little barra mundi. That is a cool little fish to pull out of a system like this. Like, this is about sort of knee height deep. Just a really small system that feeds into where we just drove over. Pretty amazing to see barramundi like this living right where we're trying to drive cars through. That's a cool fish. I've got a bit of a plan in mind for this barra, and with the fillet stashed away, the boys are in for a wicked feed tonight. First though, we've got to follow our tracks back out of the salt flats. Yeah, you can see where the tides come in, it's lots of wet sand, so it doesn't look good and um, evidence of where we went down the other day is still there. Yeah, right, well, I'm actually enjoying being third in the convoy. I might just watch what happens, mate. So far, so good, and the ground is holding up. But there's always the fear that the next bend could be a car swallower. We've still got a lot of work ahead of us to make it back to the main track. And while we've got a path to follow, now there's plenty of challenges to overcome. Going well there, mate. But slowly and carefully, we are making progress. Finally, after three days of fighting through the salt flats, we've made it back to the start of the main track to Lorella. And I reckon it's time for a bit of a celebration. Well, it has been hot, dry and dusty out here the last few days, despite the fact that we've been camped alongside some of the most beautiful and pristine rivers in the world. You can't jump in them. You get bitten by a bull shark, taken by a crocodile, so you just can't get in there. I know the guys are absolutely frothing to go for a swim. Now, the beautiful thing about Lorella is they've got dozens of water holes all around the property. So we're gonna head up some quite remote ones, the top end of the property today. Let the boys have a bit of a swim. Should be good. We've been pushing the vehicles pretty hard these last few days, 
And we've got over 100 k's of low range ahead to make it back to Lorella's amazing inland rock pools. There's so much to explore out here, and we can't wait to get into it. This is such a magical little part of the world. It's crossing through a little billabong here. It does look a little bit slippery. I should be all right. Sean has just cruised into this one and it's clearly caught him out. The 30 seems to be airing its displeasure with some horrendous clunking. Whatever that was doesn't sound good. <laughs> Mate, maybe you should let the D-Max go first, eh? <laughs> I think I'm stuck. What have you oh, done? Have you coked it? <laughs> Sean's got no choice here but to get on the winch. No crocs in there. Not at all. You know the sad thing about this whole thing is that um, the Nissan is recovering the Toyota. How does that feel, mate? Uh, the way I see it, mate, looks like you're bogged behind me and you're just winching off my back end. <laughs> Let's see if I can make it up the hill. Wow. It's going to be quite a challenge getting out of this one. Yeah, yeah I think so. Because um, someone's gone in there and actually got bogged. And oh, I think really? they probably turned it up a oh, bit. Oh, now I understand. I don't what's know happening. who, but uh, if I get my hands on that person, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Okay, take two. Let's do this properly this time. We're gonna have to go a different line, boys. Hey, the good news is, there's no crocodiles anymore. Not anymore. No. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Holy heck. Woo! Well, he made it with a whole lot those of gumption two, in that one. Those I two wheel ruts were not there before. <laughs> yeah, I was copping a little bit of a ribbon from Ruben that I, he had to recover me, the big Nissan. But what's going to be funnier if the Nissan can't drive the same Toyota line? He is towing a boat though, fair enough. I'll give him that much. But this will be quite an interesting drive because something tells me he's not going to get a V out driven by an old Toyota. I think I'm going to have to go windows up for these people because I reckon there's going to be a fair bit of spray. That's 37s and about 500 horsepower. He just towed a boat up there. I won't lie, I actually got kind of scared. Yeah. I was waiting for something to go kaboom. That, no, that's from the water anyway, from in there. I love that thing, Rubes. What have we got? Have you got, have you got like a, a turbo three liter in that thing? We got... <laughs> Righto, mate. Um, you've seen how it's done. You just need a supercharged V8 and 37s and a pretty heavy right foot and you you got this. You got this, mate. Okay. <laughs> Come on, big voice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, um, I, I'd, I'd try and straddle something here if he could. Yeah, mate, I'm going to try and finesse my way up. I don't know how it's going to go. We'll give it a red-hot shot, but Well, we've seen some big show ponies go through, but let's see what the D-Max can make of this. Yeah, boy! Yeah! <laughs> That's how you drive them! That's how you drive them, boys! I was saying pretty clean. Yeah. I was saying in my room and... Shield me. Yeah. How about that? Well, it goes to show you, you, you don't need you don't need the big ZD30. You can get up there just with the big Azuzu. Come join the cool club, mate. All, all the cool kids that drove it. We've just got one bloke not part of the club yet. His name's Timbo. Come on, mate. Up -a. Come on, Tim. Come on, We're going to you, mate. Oh, no. Oh, no. What was that noise? 
He's not there. taking no for an answer. He was just getting a feel for it. Exactly, exactly. Ruben's fallen yeah. over six times. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 this one. <laughs> I can see. I can see. Look at the spring hanger marks. Oh, what was that? His radius arms are digging in. Not the damn thing about that, right? <laughs> Come on! Up it! Oh, look out! Look out, everybody! Oh! <laughs> Holy moly! Holy moly! Did you see that? I did not see that. <laughs> oh, I, was yeah. getting, I was getting covered in mud and soot. What happened? Well, that front wheel was like this high off the ground. Woo! Holy heck, that was a big drive. <laughs> Better check me fridge. Holy heck. Gave it a shot, eh? It's like a bucking bronco. In there was a hell of a lot of, there was lures all on the dash, they were all going everywhere, there's trebles going everywhere. When I came up, I actually knocked my hat and sunnies off, and the whole lot went on the seat. <laughs> all right, onwards and upwards, boys. All right. With that bit of excitement behind us, we're well and truly back into the inland tracks of Lorella, and there's plenty of ruts ahead to greet us. Crikey, that's going to be a bit of a mission. the way up. Oh, hold on you out boys, that's a cool little drive. Bit of a wheel lift! through this, this is quite nasty. The trailer loves it, but the boat trailer, I reckon, has got a different, different opinion. You want a couple of rocks under that thing, mate? Yeah, yeah, I'll try and just get it over a bit so I'll miss that hole. Reuben has put this boat through absolute hell over the last few days and has been wheeling that Y62 like an absolute champion. But after so much punishment, the worst has happened and the suspension of the trailer has given out. Those swimming holes might have to wait because we've got a whole lot of work on our hands now. Rubens has fallen into a bit of a rut and um, broke one of the welds on the spring hanger of the trailer. So what we're gonna do is a bit of a bush mechanic fix. We're gonna try and basically jack it up clean up the weld and Ruben's going to weld off um, a battery and uh, basically stick weld it up so that's the plan anyway. Welding using a car battery is an absolute last ditch attempt to get moving but if we can't get that spring hanger reattached the boat is going nowhere. So we just got the chainy out here to make a base for that jack. The base I found was perfect it's not quite high enough but have a look at that that's made to order. Ruben will be stoked with that. With the spring hanger mount completely separated from the chassis, this is a real pickle. In desperate times, well, they call for desperate measures. Not to put any pressure on roofs down there, gotta be a pretty darn good weld. It's got a hold for a fair bit yet. But if anyone can do it, it's actually Ruben's middle name. Welding like this requires a fair old whack of amperage to get the job done. So we're gonna link two car batteries together. The aim is to connect the batteries with a minimum of power loss. So we're also gonna use a couple of steel tools to make the connection. It's a bit of a Frankenstein job, but hopefully that'll be enough. No! Well, that's gutting. Ruben tests out our DIY welder, but it's not getting enough power through to heat the welding rod. Not enough Bondi, sorry boys. It's a little bit unfortunate, just couldn't get quite enough amps out of the two batteries to make the weld. So the boys are gonna try and what, drill a hole, get a bolt through it to locate it, and that might get us out of trouble for now. A bush mechanic fix is all about trial and error and taking it one step at a time. And our hope here now is to just get the trailer patched up enough to at least get moving. Well, Ruben's thought outside the box here. He's um, just wrapped just strapped everything. I think the plan is we're not that far from the homestead, so might try and limp it back to get a weld up. Ruben can do his magic, and then hopefully, we'll Lorella Springs proof it.
This last ditch attempt has done the job and it has got us moving. But it's a lot to ask of a few straps and a few running repairs are required along the way. But you know what? This is what real adventure is all about and we are far from defeated. G'day guys, just wanted to interrupt this show just for two seconds to let you know that Graham, Jocko and myself are going to be together down at the brand new Sydney National Outdoor 4x4 show. Now this is a very exciting show for many reasons. Number one, it's a new show and number two, we're going to actually be filming a segment, Beers in the Shed, live from the show, which is first time I've ever tried something like this. So be involved, be part of it and uh, more importantly, get your tickets online. So jump onto the website and use the promo code 4 Drive 24 7 and you're going to save a stack of money. Now here's another little tip as well. Get your calendar out and write these dates down. The 22nd to the 24th of July. Mark those ones in. That's when we're going to be down at the show. And it's down at Homebush Park in Sydney. So I can't wait to see you down there. At last, after a long and painful crawl back along the tracks to Arella, we make it to the homestead. Where there's a welder available with, shall we say, just a little more juice. And our plan isn't just to fix the problem but to make the whole assembly a heck of a lot stronger. Especially because we've got another coastal river we want to check out later this trip. With that in mind, Reuben and Tim are actually going to beef up the hangar mounts and are soon getting stuck in. So Rube's snapped a U-bolt and we don't have a spare when we thought we packed them. So what we're doing now is I've just got some rebar and the oxy torch and I am heating them up and making some reinforcing. So we'll weld those to the outside of the rebar and then that'll just give it a bit more extra strength. Just running a bead across the uh, little uh, comp plate here that holds all the suspension on. We were relying on the bolts I'm just not taking any chances now after what I've seen this brutal country can do to these trailers. So I'm going to stitch all that up, then I'm going to make some uh, little comp plates that are going to actually tie it all together and make it super strong. So it'll be another couple of hours, but we're going to make this thing bush proof. The mounts on this bad boy are soon looking stronger than ever, but the boys ain't stopping there. So Rubes has gone around just now and put about four inches of weld. An inch of welds, in theory, good for a ton, so four ton. Then what we're doing is we're going to get this little bit of uh, box section here. We're going to jam that in the back there. So any pressure going that way will push through and hopefully we won't split any more welds. Tim and Reuben are fabrication gurus and soon have the trailer beefed up to Armageddon spec and everything is coming back together stronger than ever. Good that Graham and I were supervising because all the boys have actually come through with this one and done a half decent job. <laughs> I would have probably laid a few more beads if you know what I mean, but the guys have done all right. The boat trailer is now ready for another run to the coast and of course the long drive home later. But we're sweatier than ever, and now the first order of business is to go in search of a swimming hole. And for that reason, we're going to unhitch the boat for a while and pick it up later. This mint little spot we're heading to today is called Nanny's Retreat. But don't let the name fool you. This place is not grandmother's tea party, but one of the most amazing experiences in the whole of Lorella Springs. Nestled right up in the foothills of the Yayinti Range, this secluded little spot is nothing short of spectacular. Look at this. This is going to be one of the single most incredible things I've ever seen. You have to get in through that little chamber there and this big underground cavern goes all the way through here and I can only imagine 
the wet season, this is just flood right through here. Absolutely spectacular. I've never seen anything like it. And then, when you pop out, check this out. Look at that. Freaking phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. It's kind of humbling in a lot of ways. Drive around, do a wheel lift, bits and pieces. Kind of means nothing when you come here. Perfect temperature. So relaxing. So peaceful. This is probably, well, it is the most spectacular place I've ever swam. This is amazing. It's a beautiful little gorge. It's really quite deep as well. There's ferns that line the whole thing. It's just absolutely magical. Such a difference in this property where you can be on a dusty dirt road one minute, catching a barra the next, in a gorge like this, swim and cool it off for the afternoon. After days battling it out of the salt flats, this place, <laughs> it's an absolute treat, but even better. We've heard of an amazing campsite around the next valley that we can't wait to check out. Have a crack at this, boys. Where'd you pull this from? Look at these rocks. It's as if it's sort of made for a movie set or something. I know, how cool is this? Get a load of that, eh? What a spot. Hard to believe that yesterday we were down on the coast battling mud and tides. I got a feeling this is going to be one of those camps to remember. I'll grab my old ground sheet here for me swag. You might notice this side of my canopy for this particular trip has been gutted. I've taken everything out of it. I used to have a shelf up here in order to fit a second fridge. Probably took me maybe three minutes to take everything out of here and it'll take me another three minutes to put everything back in because this entire system in here is modular. To best show you that, let's go and have a look at Tim's setup. Timbo. Mr. Cahill, there you what go, brother. do I owe the pleasure? Mate, I was just having a look at the back of my canopy there. You know we struggled to get the big fridge in there the other day. She weighs a ton. Yes. I've got all the meat in the world in yeah, there. Right. Had to take my shelf out. Yep. Something I never told you, I did exactly the same thing when you delivered my bright, shiny Y62. Yeah, and the big bus. You put everything in there. You got yeah. it all where you wanted it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, man. I've taken it all out and put it in different places. <laughs> I've completely changed it. I've put two fridge slides in. I've moved your drawer to the other side. Yeah. I didn't want it where you'd put it. Oh, perfect. The whole idea of the thing is we can't deliver exactly what everyone wants, so mm. you get the choice of moving things around. And it's so simple. When I did the 12 volt, for example, yeah, in yeah. the Y62, we just ripped everything out. Took me no time at all, but I didn't have to drill any holes. No. It's something that a monkey like me can do. We've designed everything in here so that it integrates with heaps of other products on the market. Fridge slides, the, your Max Trax holders, all the different bits and pieces. I'm holding the ladder in here with some roof rack accessories. You gotcha. know, yep. All those little bits and pieces, mm. we want to integrate into the canopies. But you know, I, I've bolted the fridge down here tonight yep. and then I'm running all of my clothes just in the big old drawer here. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> Living the life of luxury, Mate, super true. Really <laughs> it makes perfect sense. That's why all these channels are in here, so you can bolt anything you want into them yep. from anywhere within the industry. Yep. You don't have to just go with one particular style. No. It can be anything you like. That's it. You've nailed it, my friend. I'm gonna let you get up and get into your rooftop tent. I don't wanna know anything about that thing. <laughs> I'll see you for a beer by the fire. Thanks very much, Done, mate. mate. Cheers, boys. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers, guys. Ooh, oh, ooh, oh, 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 sorry, I've got a leak of reach. Oh. Oh, oh. Of all the places we've been around this great country of ours, has any of you boys ever seen a waterhole like that one this afternoon? To be on before. the salt flats just before, which was hot yeah, and desolate yeah, yeah, and just yeah. crazy. Oh, then, then to come so into yeah. that was like paradise. I oh, thank God you guys did because your day's only getting better. We, we're, oh, here, right. we're here at camp right now, <laughs> and oh, I am going to cook up tonight. What and, are you cooking? Well. We managed to rustle a couple of. When I say we, I, I yeah, I totally get out of this. Rubes and myself managed to rustle a couple of barra out of it. So that. I guess we're having two minute noodles, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Start cooking up, chef. What do I say, chef? 
You're not a chef. <laughs> oh, you said it yourself, mate. <laughs> I'm just a good bloke having fun. Just a couple of good kids having fun and the bloke over here thinks he can cook. <laughs> well, how good is this? I mean, we've come to a beautiful little campsite. Today has been absolutely amazing. You know, to come from the salt flats to go straight down to beautiful little swimming holes. Dude, that, that swimming hole today. It was unbelievable. Well, it really mate, was. Well, tonight I'm cooking up a, a great feed and this is... This is a Lorella special. For more, reason, more reasons than one. History. We're, yep. do, we're doing some Barra tonight. You'll need them all. All of it? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna cook it all up tonight. <laughs> Lucky I've been doing the game train because that's some very heavy Barra. We've got, we got some Barra here. There you go. One thing Graham and I have done, we've actually come here on our own time and the yep. cameras have been off. Yep. And one thing we came up with was a little recipe called Jack Wraps. Because, the old Jack Wraps. Because we'd, we'd be going on the boat all day and yep. we've got no refrigeration on the boat. So when it come to lunchtime, you catch just a jack. Catch, a, catch a mangrove jack, which you can do up here quite easily. Yep. Put them in a wrap and we're just eating Jack Wraps. Now, the day you get sick of Jack Wraps... Is the day you should hang up your hat, as far <laughs> as I'm concerned. Well, it's Barra Wraps tonight, mate. You've done nothing here. You've just whipped a fillet off. Oh, literally just whipped a fillet so off in the, the bush. So what's the go here? How do we get the skin off this bad boy? I'll just sort of take it down to the skin, ah. and then I'll just rip the knife. Ideally, a nice, sharp knife would help. This, this knife has seen some things. Yeah, your fingers the other night. Just, and you're just running the knife down just, underneath. Just straight under the skin like that. Sharper the knife, the better. And you get you get yourself the skin come straight off like that. And um, where's Graham's swag? No, don't put it in my swag. <laughs> the dingoes okay. don't like me. So what, what I'm going to do here is just we're just going to take little little Look barra little barra slices. They actually quite they've got a fair bit of fat on these barra. These ones are a well conditioned fish. They really are. Look at that. that. You can see the fat line there. If I can pick that up and just show, you can actually see the fat. Look how white they are. Yeah, they're that's beautifully beautiful white. white. Yeah. They've been bled, they've been looked after, they're put straight on ice the yep. second you get them. Gorgeous fish. Everything about good eating fish comes down to the preparation. 100%. You've got to look after them the second you get them. I've got a couple of fresh Ziploc bags and um, we're just chucking, oh, I'm trying to get the scales out where you can. Nah, that, look, these case. are freshly harvested wild barra. You've got to get a scale. Obviously my barra was just slightly bigger than Ruben's one, but um, y y we've got a fair, <laughs> Can you hear Reuben over there? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I'm, going, I'm cheating a tiny bit. This is just a little Caesar mix. It basically is what I use at home anyway. Yeah. Flour, salt and pepper. Why you, reinvent the wheel? You can't go too wrong with that. Right. I always go a little bit more pepper. It's like MasterChef over here. In both of them. So you give that a real old rattle. Yep. Jeez, you're good with that wrist. A little bit of parsley. I'm just going to put... Just a little bit of parsley in there. Yeah, a little bit of salt too. <laughs> just a bit of extra to yeah, you got just it. pep it up, you know what I mean? Yep. Can I shake this? We go one each, just yeah, close that, that zippy up. That's a whack of barramundi in there. I oh, know, we've got a fair bit of barra. Goes a long way. Goes a long way. You just want that, that fish coated. Just coated, yeah. You can do it in a bowl and all that sort of stuff. I just feel the yeah, old taker bakes a little yep. a little bit easier and a bit cleaner when you're at camp. When I was going through high school, shake and bake was a way different <laughs> thing. But anyway, yeah, same here, mate. Don't I'm worry about it. up, and that's looking pretty good. While I'm dealing with the barra, you see, Tim's a chippy from way back, so we've left him the task of sorting out a few sweet potato fries. Well, Timbo's got the old spuds on the go. We're gonna have a little side with the spuds, and that was a great idea. It's yep. a little late inclusion. Um, we're going to get this one on the go. If you could get the old Genesis Base Camp on the go. I love yeah, this mate. thing. I've had the same cooking method for probably 15 years, and this is the first time I've actually been really excited about how it goes. I've got everything I need, and it's just so easy. I'm going to put some, just a bit in there, and as soon as that is nice and hot, Give it we'll, a bit. Ch we'll chuck those in. Yep. In the meantime, I've actually got some um, salad. I'm going to make a bit of a... Yeah. A salsa? It's on the bonnet. I let it defrost on the bonnet. Of course you did. All the veggies and stuff, I've been, I mean, freezing. And then when you want them out, you just defrost them. And they're almost as good as when you first got them. It's a crazy concept. Where's your tortillas? Because I'm going to make a start, because there's a few there. There is. And I'm going to get them cooked. Tortillas are right here. Put them on a plate, yeah. Tiny bit of olive oil and that heat it up. It's quite cold. But that's okay. It's like a cold salad that's going to go with this. And then um, a bit of mango, believe it or not. You got fresh? Oh, you got canned. Well, canned Lovely. mango. You can't take fresh mango up here. Boy, your oil's getting a bit warm here, brah. All right, starts to put the fish in. What, me? Yeah. When I suddenly become 
Two you're, I see you're, tonight. You're up. You're up. All right. Put the fish in. Might use tongs because I've been doing things with my hands today that you don't want to know about. Mango straight into that. That is the easiest sort of salad salsa mix you'll ever do in your life. Oh, that looks damn good. The colours. Dang the good. The colours are working. we got barrel wraps on the go here. Look at these. I know, and they're looking good. I wish you folks at home could smell this because it's true. Oh, my. Yeah, it's starting to flake apart. I reckon we're, we're about we are, good. Yeah, you are ready. You want me to turn this down? Yeah. And that's the key. Heat your tortillas up a little bit. Yeah, you got to get them a bit crispy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull these barra off because I think they're done. Look at that. That is oh, perfect. Look at the coloration. The perfect barra. Probably not. Look, this one's just falling apart. Ooh, well, so that means that means Graham. We can eat. That's that. the chef's privilege. I can't get it out of there. It'll be so hot. Yeah, it's going to be. You're going to burn your tonsils with that. Oh, that is the best barra you'll ever eat in your life. Yeah, fresh fish. No matter what it is, it might be a it mud is. cod. It doesn't matter. So good. Fresh, you look after it. Oh, oh my! <laughs> How good is that? Oh. That, is, that might be the best barra I've ever eaten. To be honest, it has 100%. the right flavours, and you can taste the river. Mm. Oh, if, if Tim's ready with those. I think he Tim, is. Tim, you, you good, mate? Oldie, oldie. Here he comes. Here he comes. Yeah, look at that. Bring them straight in. Bring the, them what's straight in. What's the key in. here, bro? Grab a tortilla, fellas. Can I just have a little oh. cheeky? Here you go, Tim. Yeah, they have actually come together. Store, well. you sure? Here you go, oh. mate. Yeah. So I'm just you can build a canopy. I'm just gonna put a and bit. And you can of, make a chip. A bit chip. of fish I'd in there. Oh. <laughs> Did Graham catch a barrel? No, no mate. Not no, this I... trip, mate. Unfortunately, no. oh. not for everyone. <laughs> no, it's not for everyone. Barrel club. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. got the, <laughs> <you're laughs> the barrel catchers and the non barrel catchers. <laughs> a bit of sriracha on there. You just yeah, put well, a little bit of fish. I'm on Sean. Oh, I know you are. Oh, put chips on there. Settle down. A couple of chips on there as well, boys. That's like a. Big Mac special. Yeah. Look at that. Not that the is, first time I've done that. That is a proper little bar wrap right now. Mm. Oh my God. Next oh, level. That bar wrap is just the flavours of a top end. It comes really? straight from the ocean, straight to the plate, and that dude, is that is absolutely amazing. That could be. Oh. That could be one of the greatest things. We've it, ever cooked together. It might be the best fish I've ever cooked. That, that, I, that I agree. I, I'm not saying that fish before. Half heartedly. That is truly spectacular. Mm. Because and it's that easy to cook, basically. All you mm -hmm. gotta do is come to Lorella Springs, catch mm -hmm. a barrel, catch a barrel, mm -hmm. cut up some sweet potato. Well, hold on a minute. Yep. Catching a barra. Yeah, yeah, no, you're gonna bring it. room it's and not, all. Not, not <laughs> <laughs> you know that, you know that, right. you know that. You're that. starting to talk absolute bull. <laughs> I'm gonna go and sit around the fire because I'm mate, sick of this. <laughs> you guys talk about your barra, Monday. Well, mate, it's not for everyone, Rubes, but no, cheers, right. big boy. Cheers, mate. our most popular bundles are back up for sale on forwarddrive247.com. What I mean by that, run to winters, I've never seen them so cheap. You can get a run to winch right now on 11 XP for only 830 bucks or a 13 XP for $888. Now that's a save of 157 bucks. Plus we have the My Coolman bundles, which includes like the lithium power pack, um, the fridge cover, all that sort of jazz, uh, max track bundles. Your best bet is to jump on the website right now, check it out, and like always, act quick so you don't miss out. If you ever needed to be reminded why the North is such a rite of passage for Aussie four-wheel drivers, just check out this morning in Lorella. We've got some big plans today, including a run back to the coast for another fish, but first, we've got to take a moment to soak in this landscape. The landscapes out here have truly blown my mind. I've never seen anything like this out here on Lorella Springs, and when you get into some of these valleys out here, you can just explore up and down them, and I went for a walk this morning, There's a, didn't even know it was there. There's a nice big river that's running down through here, and that'll happen a lot at Lorella. You'll find places like this. It's truly spectacular. It really is one of the greatest places I've ever been. We've got one more big day today, and I'm sure everyone down there is frothing to get away. But first, if you listen closely, if you've got a finely tuned ear like me, you'll hear the sound of bacon and eggs. <laughs> it's time for brekkie. Tim's taken up cooking duties this morning and soon has a hot brekkie on the go on the back of the Mitt's canopy as we get geared up for another day of exploring what this massive park has to offer. Before we get going though, we've got a bit of maintenance to catch up on. 
What's going on over here, mate? Nothing too serious? Nah, just a little bit of daily maintenance. Just banging the old air cleaner out and give her a blow out. I was going to say, mate, no matter what you do inside here, it's not going to turn into an FTE Toyota motor. <laughs> not a chance. See that one though, mate? Yeah, That's the business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, this, this is a very impressive rig, to be honest with you. One quick question I do have, though. It must weigh a lot. I don't know a lot about Nissan's, mate, but um, she must weigh a fair bit. This, this one thing. isn't actually that heavy. It's around about 3,300 kilos. 3,300. Which is the lightest in the fleet. <laughs> But it's got the GVM upgrade, right? Yep, of 44.99. 44. So there's a hell of a lot more weight you could put on this vehicle yep, legally. Yep. 1.2 ton I can throw on the back of this. That's one thing that people don't consider enough is GVMs. You know, you get you get a, a vehicle, you go and kit it out, and it's not hard to get to that GVM, like especially with like wagons and stuff like that. It just sort of creeps up. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to be running over GVM because if you have an accident or anything like that, it's like, yeah, your, your insurance is void and all that sort of jazz. So as a wagon, you know, we've got dealer network around Australia, so you can just go and get a big four and a half ton GVM practically wherever you live. Really? So you don't have to go to Toowoomba anymore? You can literally, no, no, if you live no, in no, WA, no. you could buy Yep, dealer in, um, in, in Perth here in WA, yeah, no worries at all. I'm a big fan, mate. My 200's got the GVM upgrade, and even with that big heavy rig, I still have about 600 kilos to play with, which yeah. is absolutely amazing. And yours is fully kitted out. I know, it's got every <laughs> bell and whistle on it, mate, and um, tell you what, give this thing a run for it. No, I probably wouldn't actually. <laughs> <laughs> this is very impressive, mate. Look, I want to let you get back to it. I'm going to um, go back on the 30, maybe have a bit of brekkie and... Yeah, breakfast sounds awesome. Get on the tracks. <laughs> We've got a pretty big itinerary for today. First checking out another mad swimming spot in the ranges before heading back to the main homestead to pick up the boat. Then we're going to be punting it out to the coast, to a place that holds a special significance for all of us at 4-Wheel Drive 24-7. The Worley Wancha. It's the river that we first pushed out over a decade before Lorella was on the map. And with that in mind, we're soon ready to hit the road. What a beautiful little campsite. Now we've got another day in paradise. You've got to pinch yourself some days when you wake up. The Inti range is peppered with magic spots to go for a swim. And before we pick up the boat, we've got one more we just have to check out. The best swimming spots in Lorella are hidden away right up in the hills. But in this case, just the track itself provides a bit of a challenge in its own right. Holy heck, boys, a bit of a jump up up here. I'm just gonna just crawl off it, hopefully, but it might be a bit of a challenge. Gee whiz, where'd that come from? This little slice of Coffs Harbour. I might hang back and let you have a crack at it, mate. Yeah, right, gee. Just walked up it. Oh yeah, boys, it is quite steep though. I wasn't ready for that at Lorella. I'll try and pick a line through here somehow. Oh, getting hung up could be a bit of a problem. <laughs> Come on, D-Max. Oh, no! Holy heck, Graham! Hold on to her! <laughs> I'm gonna need to bump it up. I'm just a little concerned about me uh, tail shaft. <laughs> Full bunty. <laughs> Good spotting there, Timbo. You're up now, big guy. Surprises me where me and the little D-Max can go. Come on, Rubes. The big DMW rig is just so capable, and it absolutely just walks up this one. Wow. Easy done. Easy done. That was a masterclass, really. Amazing, this <laughs> Yeah! Here we go. Got it. Loves it. Wow! Yeah, yeah boy! Full tour mode. Still got it. Loves it. Loves every minute of it. That was awesome. <laughs> That's science at work, kids. Now let's go swim.
this spot we're heading for is called Helicopter Pools. Now look, it's a bit of a trek on foot, but man oh man, is it worth the walk. When you're in the middle of the NT on a 40 degree day, it's hard to describe just how special it is to come across a crystal clear swimming spot like this. And we've wasted no time to get amongst it. In the harsh landscape that is the Gulf, a place like this is an absolute oasis. Well, after a few days out on those salt flats, cutting a few tracks through, catching a few barra, nothing feels better than this. If you get out to a rally, you gotta come and find these rock holes because they are literally as good as they look. With another swim under our belts, it's time to head back to the homestead to grab our recently upgraded boat trailer and make a push for the coast and one last chance to experience gulf fishing. We've soon got the boat hooked up to start the long drive out to the Worley Wancha. The first time we came here, it took us days and days of scrub bashing to push a track through, but now that track is maintained and it is virtually a road for all others to enjoy. Hey, Graham, got a copy, mate? I sure do, bud. I was just reminiscing, looking out the windows. I know, I can't believe, I, I think it's been like eight years since the first time we pushed out to this coastline and I'll tell you what, I'm pretty excited to get out there. Me too, mate. I'm not going to lie, maybe I'm getting softer in my older years, but I'm pretty glad this road looks like it does because looking off to me left and me right, I can't believe we actually drove vehicles through that. I know, I know. It's so good, mate. What a trip it's been, though. It's been absolutely amazing. Mate, absolutely frothed on it. It's been fantastic and super cool to get back out to Lorella as well. To come to Lorella, you go from one river system to another, mate. And there we go, I can see the creek now. The Worley Wancha. Holy heck, mate, feels bloody good. Really does. Let's get down, slide that boat in one more time. Ruben, what do you reckon, mate? First time catching a barrow, do you reckon you can make it an even three? Mate, this has been such an epic trip. And being able to put the boat in the water and see the sights that we've got to see has been absolutely phenomenal. And fellas, I've got to credit to you actually making this track and pushing this through the way you did. For us to be able to drive through here now in comfort and be able to launch this boat, this is going to be the most epic, epic trip I think I've ever done. Not wrong, brother. Not wrong. Timbo, mate, you get excited if someone gives you a bag of popcorn, so I can only imagine what it's been like for you. Mate, I'm as happy as a dog with two tails. This trip has been the trip of a lifetime for me. I've really, really thoroughly enjoyed it and it might be the last one for a little while, seeing as I'm going back to uh, be your dad for the third time round. So I wish you all the best, and um, we'll be hopefully getting out again on the track soon. Well, boys, one last push, and let's get out to the coast, and uh, let's dunk that boat in. Just up ahead is the mouth of the river, complete with a spot to drop in the boat. This system might be a little easier to access than our last spot, but I reckon we're still in with a good chance of catching a feed. <laughs> Folks, look, if you haven't already, put the golf on your bucket list, because this place is as good as it looks. Sure enough, with the light getting on, the fish are starting to bite and our Lorella adventure is coming to a close in the best possible way. Good fish. I think you've cooked I him think in the bump. you in the tail. Getting up near the surface. Nice yellow queenie. Timbo, oh, oh, oh. yeah. first queenie. Yeah. Well done, so mate. So good, mate. <laughs> so good. Well, in case you can't tell, we're having the time of our lives. This right here, Lorella Springs. We've been up here a couple of times, Sean and I. These boys, first time up here. And they don't come up here again, I reckon I'll eat my hat. I've got to say, this has been one of those trips, mate, I'll remember for just about ever. Coming here yep. is a special place. This place is off tap. It's yeah. just so wild, so untouched, and there's so much to it, a million acres. Of just 
pure adventure up here. And there's yep. swimming holes, there's big salt flats. And if you're a bit adventurous, you can find yourself off the beaten track pretty easy. You can, I mean, Rhett's put in, there's hundreds of kilometres of tracks here right now. Yeah. Some of them easy, some of them pretty darn hard. All of them though, lead to majestic spots like yep. this. Rock holes, campsites, folks. Do yourselves a favour, put it in the calendar. Lorella Springs, take six weeks, take eight weeks, heck. Take a year, get up here and see it. We've had a blast. We've got, well, I reckon if I use my fingers, I reckon we've got about 30 minutes of sunshine left. I better get another car. Oh, I haven't caught a fish yet. <laughs> Folks, we'll catch you next time. <laughs> I'm full drive 24-7. Well, you sound surprised, mate. <laughs> oh, I am surprised. I'm going to dive in and get one. <laughs> Folks, we really hope you've enjoyed this trip, just as much as we did making it. And if you did, give us a like and hit the subscribe button. We really appreciate it. Righto, how about some outtakes? Out on the coast too, things start to get a bit sort of moist in the old... <laughs> Where am I going with that? It's freaking weird. Well, I've got to tell you after... Oh, that was a... <laughs> they call that the welcome stranger, folks. Now it's been damn good, mate. It's been damn good. I've enjoyed it thoroughly. We're not going to use that. I was just trying to use the word good four times in a row. Editors cut this bit out and use this bit. I forgot my mic. You got your mic. What are you going to do, oh, mate? Make you a presenter or what? What are we going to do, mate? We'll go back or what? What are we going to do? Oh, <laughs> the boys. Oh, the boys. They know what's, they know what's going on. Good plan. Good, 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 good plan. Good. Da, 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 da. Hey, take your earpods out. <laughs> I tried to warn you. I tried to warn you. All right, kiss. Come on. Come on. You're not my guy. Picking <laughs> oh. <laughs> the ground, is it? <laughs> Do you curl your hair, or is that just natural? It's gorgeous, isn't it? It is. I feel like if I could have hair like that. Oh, it's luscious locks. I That's sexual tension. That is what well, that is. <laughs> Been in the bush for some time, I don't blame you. Yeah, g'day, Sean. What's going on? Like, I'm Graham. Yeah, g'day, mate. Yeah. I I'd love to teach you a couple of things about barrow fishing. I'm glad you asked. You can turn your camera off. Probably good, couldn't it? If you felt like it. But... Doesn't feel like there's going to be any water in here, around here, and it's a bit. Oh, I'm mad, I'm absolutely going mad. Uh, I can't reach it. It's too far. I can't reach it. It's a shame. Oh, nearly. Oh, nearly. <laughs>